Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to our Binghamton University International Student Session during this December virtual visit days. Uh, we're excited to share some information with you about Binghamton, in particular things that we think are going to be really important for our Binghamton University applicants, as well as how to apply in kind of a step-by-step -step process to uh, learn more about Binghamton and everything that you need to know. So before we get started, I'd like to introduce a couple of students that we have here on the back end who are there to answer any questions you have. Uh, they're going to introduce themselves briefly here and you can address them in the Q&A directly if you have a specific question for them. Or if you have general questions, you can always put them in the chat and they will answer them or we will answer them at the end if we have time. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to our uh, students here. Our first student is Ms. Haoyu Li. Uh, Haoyu, would you introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hello everyone, I'm Hao Yu Li and I'm senior majoring in accounting and finance in School of Management. And next we have Ms. Xin Yue, Silver Zhang. Ms. Silver, could you introduce yourself? Hey guys, my name is Silver. Um, I'm from Beijing, China. I'm also a senior and I major in linguistic and also minor in French and translation studies. Uh, I'm from Harper College. Nice to meet you guys. Thank you very much. So to get started here, we're going to go ahead and play a video of Binghamton. It's going to give you an idea of what our campus looks like, um, and then we'll delve right into some more facts about Binghamton. So thank you for joining us, and here we go. campus here in upstate New York. Um, we're going to get into a little bit more about where that is uh, in a little bit. But first, we want to talk about Binghamton's reputation. So Binghamton is an internationally known school. Uh, it's one of the nation's top 50 public universities, and it is the number one New York public university 
in New York State. So we are very, very well known within New York State as well as in the surrounding areas. We have students from over 100 different countries. We have students who come from all 50 states. So we don't just have students who come from New York, but we really are a little metropolitan area right here in upstate New York. And we like to talk about this idea of value at Binghamton. We are one of only 10 Best Buy public universities in the US. So a place where you can come and your education really, really is valuable and you're able to get the most, um, stretch your dollar and, and be able to get a, a great education for an affordable price. Um, so Binghamton University, we are not in New York City, but we are about a three hour drive from New York City, as you can see here with that little B on the map. But within a five to six hour radius, you can find lots of different metropolitan areas and larger uh, upstate um, uh, northeastern U.S. cities such as Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Boston, Toronto. These places allow students to go for internships, job opportunities over the summer, uh, just to explore larger cities while you're studying in the U.S., uh, but then coming back to Binghamton to really have a great study environment and, and work environment during that semester to, to study for those tests, to work with professors, to have that one-on-one -on -one feel, that's really something that is important to us at Binghamton. And we do have a four seasons weather here. So we do get some snow in the winter, not a whole lot, uh, it depends on the year, uh, but our springs are very beautiful and mild. Our summers are absolutely wonderful. And the, the fall is full of uh, beautiful colors as well. So lots of diverse uh, uh, seasons here in upstate New York as well. So a little bit more about our, our school. What kind of school is Binghamton? We are considered a mid-sized public research university. So mid-sized means some schools have up to 40,000 students, uh, very, very large schools. Uh, Binghamton's not that way. Binghamton has only about 14,000 total undergraduate students. So we can still give individual attention to our students while still having enough large uh, resources and, and resources of a large university so that our students have access to lots of different academic programs, research opportunities, things that a large school would have, but still being able to have that individual attention of a small to medium sized school. I mentioned we do have students from over 100 different countries. We have over 2300 different international students on our campus. So we really are a diverse campus. And another night number I like to highlight on this page is our 92%. This is what we call a retention rate. So our first year students stay at Binghamton and continue here their second year. This is really important because this is an indicator of our students happiness and their success success at Binghamton. They're very happy at Binghamton. They come to Binghamton and they stay at Binghamton with us from their first year to that second year. Uh, that's not just a high number for uh, public universities. You can see the national average is only 62%, but that's high for all universities. So it's really an indicator of how well our students are doing at Binghamton and how happy they are. So next I'm going to get into the academic side a little bit. My colleague Tanya will talk about this uh, in more detail later. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of a chance here to take a look at these numbers and maybe take a screenshot of this slide if you're thinking about applying. Each year we get over 41,000 applications. So we are a very selective school at Binghamton. You can see here some of our mid 50% SAT ranges and ACT ranges, as well as our middle ranges for our uh, TOEFL, IELTS, Duolingo scores, those English proficiency scores that we we will need you to submit as an international student, as well as our high school GPA mid 50% ranges on a US 100 based scale and a 4.0 scale. Now we know each school is different and international curriculums vary from type to type. We take all that into account when we are assessing your application. So we will recalculate those to base uh, all of our decisions on the US 100 based scale. But I'm going to let my colleague Tanya go into that a little bit further uh, once we get down the line and into more of the application process. So for now, I'm going to hand it over to uh, my next colleague, Pat, our little trio of international counselors here with us today. And she is going to introduce our six different schools to you and go in depth with some of the schools that we know our international schools, our students are really, really interested in. Pat, without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Thank you, Carrie. And just, um, first of all, when you look at this uh, slide, I think this slide, gives you a sense of what is one of the advantages of coming to school in the United States. The fact that um, there are six different schools that comprise Binghamton University, and that you have an opportunity to study in at least one and sometimes more than one. So um, what I'd like to do is to tell you a little bit about each of these schools. I'm going to do this a little bit backwards because I'm going to spend more time on one, two, and three 
So let me begin with the Decker College of Nursing for anyone who might be interested in nursing. You have the opportunity in this school to enter directly as a first year student, or you can enter Binghamton University through Harper College and then transfer into the Decker College of Nursing in your sophomore year. Typically you would be in that school by your junior year. So there is an opportunity to do that. And then the third opportunity at Binghamton is that you could earn a degree in both the Decker College of Nursing and a degree in another school. And that's what we call double degree. So already you see you have three opportunities if you're interested in nursing to come into that. And actually there is a fourth which is on the graduate level. And we can talk about that if you're interested. The other school that I'd like to briefly mention is um, the college, the School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. And in that program, you would be admitted directly to Harper College. And then in your first year, you would have the opportunity to apply as an early action or early assurance student in your second semester of your first year. So in that, in the pharmacy school, you would also have the opportunity to do your degree in a variety of ways. You could either do it in a two plus four format, which is a six year program leading to the PharmD, in an eight year program where you get a bachelor's degree and then you continue on for, for pharmacy, which is another four years, or you could do it in a three plus five. There are a whole bunch of different ways to do this. So pharmacy at Binghamton is not a direct admit, but you would be admitted if you indicated that you were interested in pharmacy and you would be admitted to Harper College. And then in your first year, you would have the opportunity to apply in your second semester for the early assurance admission to the College of Pharmacy, School of Pharmacy. The number six, College of Community and Public Affairs is a college at Binghamton which offers two majors, the major in human development and students who are interested, for example, in working in their communities and in advocacy um, or in other kinds of social issues are very often attracted to that major. Um, there is also the social work major, which is a professional degree. And once again, you would be starting that program in your third year in the College of Community and Public Affairs. So it's very possible to apply to the College of Community and Public Affairs as a high school senior, secondary school senior last year, or you could apply within Binghamton. If you were at another school at Binghamton, you could apply for an intra-university transfer to the College of Community and Public Affairs. And why am I doing, I'm starting with three schools which um, show you that there's, there's an ability to move around. There's an ability for choice. Unlike a lot of other countries in the US, when you begin your first year at, um, at a US university, there usually is an opportunity for you to explore. Many of our students, in fact, 50% of our entering first year students enter as undecided or undeclared. And typically by the end of your sophomore year, you will have made the decision as to where you, what you want to study and in what school you wish to be. So certain of our schools, the School of Nursing, for example, the School of Pharmacy and the College of Community and Public Affairs, both will accept you from another school at Binghamton. So there is the possibility for inter-university transfer. Now I'd like to go on and continue with um, what I consider the intellectual heart, not just me, I think everyone considers this to be the intellectual heart of the university. No matter what school you are at in Binghamton, at least well, up to about 50% of your curriculum in most programs will be taken through coursework in Harper College. So when you take a look at the the three divisions which offer fine arts and humanities. Um, you will be, you could, no matter what school you're in, you could be taking courses from any one of the disciplines that are listed on this chart. So 
if you are admitted to, um, if you are an undecided student or an undeclared student, have really no idea of what you might want to study, then you will be considered for admission to Harper College. And your first year, you will be in Harper College. Your second year, you may be in Harper College. If this is the, if you choose to study one of the majors that are listed up here. What I'd like to, to uh, emphasize is that we actually have three divisions in Harper College. We have the Fine Arts and Humanities, and you can see the range of majors, the range of disciplines that are listed there, science and mathematics, and then also the social sciences. In some schools in the US, this will be arranged differently. There will be different schools, but at Binghamton, this comprises the Harper College of Arts and Sciences, which is the liberal arts school at Binghamton. What I also want to emphasize on Harper College is the fact that we have many interdisciplinary and cross-disciplinary programs. So it's very possible for students, for example, let me show you a student in economics to also be majoring in environmental studies or a student in biology to be also majoring in environmental studies. And while I'm talking about that, let me point out that over 86% of our first year students enter with advanced credit earned in AP or IB or A-level coursework, which makes doing double majors, triple majors, double degrees, very, very possible at Binghamton. So you see you can combine an interest in, a, in for example, chemistry with an interdisciplinary program in material science and engineering. There are many things that you can do to further your academic interests or your professional interests as well. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, the School of Management um, is uh, probably one of our top schools for recruitment. Um, I always tell students, no matter what school you are at in Binghamton, that when you arrive at Binghamton, you should make sure you have brought a suit because within two weeks of your arrival, there will be a major career fair where you will have the opportunity to interact with employers and um, for the discussion of internships. And if you're a senior for, or junior for, the, for discussion on job possibilities. This school offers two degrees, the Bachelor of Science in Accounting and also the Bachelor of Science in Business Administration with eight career tracks, concentrations, entrepreneurship, finance, quantitative finance, marketing, management, analytic, uh, management information systems, supply chain, leadership consulting, business analytics. Um, what's also interesting is that, for example, uh, in this school, you can also earn your MBA in one additional year so this is a four plus one uh, opportunity. And again, if you have advanced credit, it could even be in less time than, uh, than five years. So one needs to, to look at this. I'd also like to point out that for example, you could also do a master's in data analytics uh, if you were a student in the School of Management majoring in business administration with a concentration in business analytics and that combination because none of the none of the programs in the school of management are currently considered to be stem programs but the addition of data analytics on the master's level would provide you with a three-year opportunity currently to remain in the u.s in a position of employment um, after you graduate so there's some interesting opportunities here Binghamton is uh, quite known for its, its accelerated programs. Forgive me because I did not mention that at Harper College. There are also some opportunities to do a four plus ones, three plus twos, including in the School of Management to do a four plus one or a three plus two um, with um, the MBA. So at Binghamton, the possibilities abound. One of the most popular programs amongst international students, if, if uh, talking with students is any indication, is the computer science major. Um, this major 
excuse me just for a moment here. This major is, um, is, is very, very popular, but it's also a very small, small, small program. Um, one of the things that I think is important here is to recognize that this program is accredited by the, um, uh, AB, the ABAT organization. And that organization, when you're looking at a computer science program, I think you want to always make sure that your engineering or your computer science programs are accredited. So the Watson College, this, although this is not an engineering program, this program is offered through the Watson College. And it offers a rich set of courses in software design, in programming and hardware design, and everything in between. So you begin taking computer science courses in your first semester. And um, some of our freshmen have previous CS experience, others do not, um, but it doesn't matter. If you've been accepted to this school, you will have the opportunity to begin as a first year student. If you have, if you, um, have limited programming experience, you begin with programming concepts and applications. Otherwise, you're going to start with hardware and software systems. And during your first two years, you study multiple programming languages and computer science principles. Um, in your junior year, you have the opportunity, your third year, you have an opportunity to pursue elective classes and the interests that you have established. For example, we offer electives in software systems in networking including mobile and wireless networks. We offer electives in web-based systems, machine learning, data mining, artificial intelligence, computer graphics, computer vision, cybersecurity, embedded systems, cloud computing, robotics, and of course, the most popular game design. So uh, one other feature I think that's excellent about this program is that every required course in this program is taught every semester. This allows you to uh, explore different paths through the program. And it also allows students in other schools to minor. So for example, if you're in Harper College, you could minor in computer science, or you could even earn a double degree, a uh, dual de degree. So whatever your major is at, at Binghamton, you can combine that with either a minor in computer science or with a dual degree, a double degree, a degree from two different schools at Binghamton. Also, um, you can study abroad through this program. You can pursue long semester, uh, semester long co-ops for credit. Um, you certainly will have an opportunity for internships at any point um, in this program. And uh, clearly uh, the students in this program will have incredible both research and internship opportunities. And you can see that one of the most popular projects here is the HackBU, um, which uh, is a 24 hour program. And I don't know how students make it through this, but boy, it's intense. It's definitely intense. Okay, can I go on? Thank you. Let's go on to the Watson School now. Um, the Watson School, as I mentioned, does house uh, career um, computer science, but it also houses a number of um, incredible majors in engineering, the biomedical major, mechanical engineering, industrial and systems major, computer major, uh, computer engineering, the electrical engineering major, and also offers a minor in sustainability. Um, in your first year in this program, you will be enrolled in what we call the engineering de design division. Here you experience hands-on design and development from the very start. And you will have the opportunity to um, see what each of the engineering majors involves. So at the end of your freshman year, you will then declare one of these majors. So you may come in saying that you want to study mechanical, but after your experience in the engineering design major, perhaps you move into biomedical. So the first year is really an opportunity for you to understand what are the offerings of every one of the 
engineering majors within the Watson School. And then um, at the end of your freshman year, you will enroll in one of the specific majors. So this is a direct entry program um, at Binghamton. There are limited opportunities for transfer, for intra-university transfer. So, um, and clearly they are limited. Um, so if you are applying, if you're interested in engineering, I would advise you to definitely apply to uh, the engineering school to indicate your academic interest as engineering. We, um, this school also has facilities that involve uh, $700 million in new equipment, computer facilities. It's a very hands-on program. Um, one of the interesting things about this program is that it um, underscores the liberal arts component in the fact that engineering students right from the first year are expected to present written reports and um, to, to uh, uh, present their research to teams of outside uh, business people, engineering individuals. So you have that opportunity to present your proposals, your research right from the first year that you enter this program. By the time you graduate, you are well prepared to enter either um, the work world of engineering or to continue research. And uh, when we talk about research, this is one of the schools that is, um, has uh, incredible opportunities for research. It has um, international reputations in the area of small scale systems, in electronic packaging, in information security and intelligence systems. So um, uh, to come to this school, if you're interested in developing your research capabilities for your further career, this is a school that has all kinds of grants from places like the National Science Foundation, from the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, from the National Institutes of, of Standards and Technologies. It does research internationally, for example, with Samsung in Korea. There are students who have internships at Samsung in Korea. So your internships can be internationally as well as based in the US and or based in Binghamton. Hey, Beth, thanks so much for, for doing that great overview of the six schools um, with special attention to Harper College of Arts and Sciences, uh, the School of Management, and as well as the Watson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Um, so you might be thinking, what is your classroom experience going to be like just in general, besides the actual uh, oppor studying opportunities and research opportunities that we have? Um, so all the degree programs at Binghamton, the ones that were mentioned by Pat, these are all four year uh, degree programs. So it does take four years to complete. Each year is divided into two uh, primary semesters. We have our fall semester, which starts in late August. We have our spring semester that usually starts um, in late January. This year, it's going to start around uh, early February or so. Um, and then each semester, students take uh, between three and five courses. And then uh, a question that often comes up is, what is our daily schedule like? Well, it could change, uh, you know, every day. So there isn't a set time for school like you might find in, in high school or in some uh, other colleges or universities. So for example, you might have a class every Monday and Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. You might, and then that same week, you'll have another class on Tuesdays from uh, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then you'll have you know, another class uh, that meets every week for one hour on Friday. It just kind of depends. Um, All together, students spend between 12 and 16 hours per week in the classroom and as much, if not tw twice as much time studying, uh, but there's still time for you to engage in other activities like clubs and things on campus. Of course, um, a lot of students might think of state universities like Binghamton University as being a very big school, maybe uh, feeling very impersonal, imagining classrooms that are very full of students, uh, but actually we, we have very 
different kinds of classrooms. So about 46% of the classroom experience here you'll have at Binghamton will have fewer than 20 students. And then about 40% are gonna have between 21 and 50 students. Um, so the vast majority of your classes while you're a student at Binghamton are gonna have less than 50 students. So that means that you're gonna have great access uh, to your professors. And we have excellent professors here at Binghamton University. They're experts in their field. They're supporting students with up-to-date uh, research opportunities as well as academic mentorship. Uh, you can see here, you know, that nice student to faculty ratio that we have. Um, and then also uh, many distinguished, distinguished faculty as well. We're also immensely proud of um, one of our professors pictured here in the tuxedo, uh, Professor Stanley M. Whittingham. Um, so Professor Whittingham, his research helped to develop the lithium ion battery. So for his pioneering work, he was awarded the 2019 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. And he is a professor who does work with undergraduate students and does enjoy working with undergraduate students. Um, so everybody here today, know that you are taking a little bit of uh, Binghamton University research with you wherever you go. If you have a laptop, if you have um, an iPhone, uh, or if you have ambitions of having a, an electric car, so day. Uh, you have Stanley Whittingham and his colleagues to thank for that. In addition to your major, you may be invited to one of these um, prestigious honors programs that we have here at Binghamton University. So these are not majors. These are programs that you can do alongside your major. You're going to be part of a cohort of students. These are top students um, of our applicants. Uh, the Binghamton University Scholars Program is a school-wide honors program that's open to uh, all majors. So students who are invited to this program, they can uh, take advantage of special internships. They can take advantage of mentorship from top level faculty and administrators. And if they complete the program, they graduate with honors. They can also take part in um, Binghamton University Scholars Housing. Uh, so it is a very nice group. Uh, actually, I think it's the group that's pictured here that you can be a part of. The first year research immersion program is geared towards students who are going to be studying within the STEM field. So science, technology, uh, engineering, mathematics. This allows students to do research within their first three semesters at Binghamton University. Um, so that first year and a half, as I had mentioned. So you get to do hands-on research in one of 10 uh, different research streams. We have a stream in neuroscience. We have one in community and global public health. We have one in microbial biofilms. Um, we have one in acoustic signal analysis with the drones. It's a very interesting work that students are doing. And the benefit of being a part of FRI or research immersion program is, uh, you know, of course, getting that early experience. Most students don't really get research experience until much later in their college career, or sometimes not even until they get to grad school. So for you to have that research experience so early on, um, that's going to make you very competitive for graduate school when you apply. And it'll also give you a chance to develop relationships with those faculty. So students, faculty who are going to uh, maybe invite you to come on to work on more projects or who will be your recommenders for the future. PricewaterhouseCoopers Scholars is geared towards students who are applying to our School of Management. So those students who are interested in accounting or maybe business administration. Uh, so with this program, students can uh, take advantage of opportunities for special networking events. They can hear uh, from CEOs who come to speak at our CEO speaker series. And they also take advantage of an international trip. So this is a 10 day trip that students do um, to learn about international business. Previous trips have been to Germany, they've been to Japan and the UK. Um, so it is a very popular program. Uh, Innovation Scholars Program, uh, it's not a first year program, it's more of a second year program. So it's still evolving. Students um, can be invited to this after one or two semesters here at Binghamton, they work on real world problems. Um, they work collaboratively to find solutions to these problems. Um, this past year, we had one of our innovation scholars created uh, a ventilator just in his dorm room uh, using household supplies. Uh, so that was something that he was able to do with support of innovation scholars. Uh, 
The source project is a lot like FRI. So students are invited uh, in their first two semesters to do research, but within the social sciences and humanities. So that's very unique. I'm not aware of a lot of other college campuses that allow students to do uh, research in the social sciences and humanities in this way. Students can choose from one of six different research streams. Uh, we have a research stream in human rights. We have one called thinking through painting. Um, there's another research stream um, called immigration and refugee resettlement. So very interesting issues that the students are working on and they're also developing original works. Again, you're getting that hands-on uh, research experience from an early uh, time in your college career. You're able to develop those relationships with faculty and it really gives you a good springboard um, into research programs as you go throughout your college years. We have wonderful international student support uh, here on our campus. The Office of International Student uh, Scholars and Services, IS, uh, offers guidance through for the immigration process and for things like health insurance. They also offer social programming so that you can uh, connect with other international students on campus. So after students are admitted to Binghamton, IS is going to be that point of contact uh, for you for throughout the four years. English Language Institute offers credit bearing courses in English. So just to uh, clarify, Binghamton University does not have intensive English programs, but for students who might need just a little bit of sharpening uh, on skills like speaking, listening, writing, um, the English language, excuse me, the English Language Institute can help you with that. Uh, they, we also have career services for uh, international students, and I'll talk a little bit more about some of those when we get to, to our alumni page. Uh, but with career services, our Fleischmann Center for Career Services does have an affinity group for international students, so they are well aware of the unique needs of international students. Um, also, international students can work at the Binghamton University campus in, in several roles. Students can work up to 10 hours uh, per week and during school periods and up to 20 hours during break periods. There's different kinds of campus employment. Uh, students work in the dining halls. They work as residence assistants in the um, in the residential uh, communities. They work in the library. They work in IT tech. We even have students who drive buses around the campus. So there are all kinds of work opportunities for students. Uh, in addition, we have a little over 450 different clubs and organizations, including a number of international student organizations. So these are really important for students to get involved with, to get connected, to meet your new friends, make those uh, relationships that are going to last you beyond your college years and also help you to find new people to explore the greater Binghamton area with. So with regard to career preparation, I did allude to our award-winning Fleischmann Center for Career Services. Um, so they really do a great job um, with working with our students something that Pat talked about before. They do host uh, job fairs here. We do welcome a little over 1,800 employers to our campus every year. Uh, so that's a wonderful opportunity for students to get that exposure, get that experience interviewing and, and meeting employers and um, learning about the job market. The Fleischmann Center can help you with preparing things like a resume, cover letter. Uh, even if you've never worked before, they will work with you so that you have an impressive looking resume and color, cover letter. Uh, they can do mock interviews with you. Uh, and, and they go even a step further after you get that offer from that internship or maybe from that uh, job. Uh, they can help you to negotiate because uh, I think that's often a vital step that students miss the negotiation process. So they are a really great resource and they are uh, continue to have programs and events throughout the year for students to take advantage of. 
So as we, uh, we do have wonderful graduates all around the US, all around the globe. They're excited um, to support our current students and our recent graduates uh, with their advice, their knowledge, uh, their stories of their career trajectory too. Um, so in addition to helping students with creating their resumes, creating their cover letters, connecting with employers, Fleischmann Center can also connect you uh, with some of our alumni that we have, uh, not just the four that we have here, but you know, some of the 140,000 that we have around the US and around the globe. Uh, for some of you who might be looking at this on a smaller screen, I'll just shout out some of the alumni that we have posted here. Aman Katri from graduated 2009 with a bachelor in economics. Uh, he is a brand partnership manager at Pinterest. Uh, so I do have my own Pinterest board, so I'm very uh, well aware uh, of their products. They're a great company. Uh, Aklan Okor, he is a graduate of 2006 in mechanical engineering. He's a consultant at the Boston Consulting Group. Uh, Sylvia Wong, class of 82, also received her Bachelor of Arts in Economics. She's a man in Managing Director at Bialis Group Incorporated. And then we have Jung Sik Yoon, who's a double graduate, received his uh, um, degree in 2008 and also a uh, Master of Science in 2009 in Accounting, Senior Manager at Korea Hydro and Nuclear Power Company, LTD. Um, so if you want, we can also check out the outcomes on our page. Binghamton University does a great job of showing where students go after they graduate. So at this time, I'm going to hand it back over to my colleague, Carrie. She's gonna tell you more uh, about the student life side of things. Thanks, Tanya. Uh, so I, I do see we're running a bit short on time and I do wanna make sure that we get to the application side of things too. I know students are right in the middle of the application process, but when you come to a university, you know, you're know you going to be living here for four years. So we wanna make sure it feels like home. So I'll just give you a quick rundown of, you know, outside of the academics, what does Binghamton look like? We do have six modern residential communities and they're really like little neighborhoods. They each have their own traditions, their own cultures, their own dorming styles. So you can choose from a variety of different dorming styles if you want to just have one roommate or you want to have a suite worth of roommates. Another unique thing about our communities is our collegiate professors who serve as role models and leaders in the community. You can come to them with questions, not just academic questions, but any questions that you have outside of your academic uh, role or, or just questions about adjusting to life on campus. And they're really to serve as, as an advisor and as a mentor to our students. And it's something that our students really enjoy having at their, uh, at their exposure and, and their uh, ability to go ask questions to that professor uh, any time, night or day within the community. We do have lots of different food options on campus. So each of our residential communities has their own dining hall, but we also have areas within our campus, uh, retail stores and halal, kosher, vegetarian, vegan options. We even have two registered dietitians on campus for students who have any dietary needs or restrictions or need any help. Uh, they're very, very good at working with our students to make sure any dietary needs are met. So so that our students really do feel at home and safe uh, at Binghamton and that they are able to get what they want. Um, on the next slide here, as far as student life is concerned, like Tanya said, a lot of our students are definitely involved outside of the classroom and out academics. Uh, we have over 450 different student run clubs and organizations. We have a horseback riding club, you can see in the picture there. We have a cheese club, a hula hoop club. We have uh, ballroom dance clubs. We have a cappella groups. Uh, we medicine or pre-law or want to really get involved with other students of like-minded professions even in the undergraduate level so there's really something for everyone and if there's something that you think doesn't exist but you think it would be a great opportunity our students are very good at taking the reins and going ahead and starting those clubs on their own. Um, in addition to those, we have lots of different recreation facilities and students certainly do get involved uh, physically on our campus as well whether it's club sports teams or intramural sports teams just in one NCAA athletics and really here to compete. So our students are, are really, really great at expanding their experience to include classroom activities uh, as well as uh, just regular life activities outside the classroom within the community to really get a holistic experience at Binghamton. 
As far as our campus is concerned, uh, we know that especially for international students and in the world right now, safety is a big priority for our students. And it's something that we take very seriously at Binghamton on our campus four hours a day and only students who live in those halls can access them via a key card. We do have security cameras in all of our residence halls as well as an emergency phone system. If you're anywhere on our campus you can see at least one blue light on our campus and that blue light will connect you directly with our university police. They can come meet you where you are and escort you back to your dorm room, to your vehicle. If you're just not feeling comfortable or safe that's what they're there for and, and they are trained to work specifically with our university university student population. So they have a unique set of resources and being able to work with our students that way. Um, so those are some of, some of the ways that we want to make sure that our students feel safe. And it, it really does feel like an at-home experience when you're so far away from home for four whole years. We know that that's a, a big, a big transition for a lot of students. So we try to do as much as we can to accommodate that. Um, so now I'm going to turn it back over to my colleague, Pat, again, who's going to talk a little bit about um, our cost of attendance and our scholarship opportunities at Binghamton. As you will see, the total cost of attendance for the first year is $46,764 US dollars. This is the amount that you would be required to show in order for Binghamton, once you are admitted, to issue you your I-20 so that you could secure your F-1 visa. Now, this is not necessarily the amount that you will pay each year, but this is the amount that is required to obtain the I-20. You do not need to show this for admission purposes, but many students will submit their financials in, uh, together with their application so that as soon as they are admitted, their I-20 can be issued and then they can begin the process of obtaining their F-1 visa. And I know that of, of, of great importance to all students is does Binghamton offer scholarships? Well, we offer some partial scholarships. They last year they ranged from 2,500 US dollars to 13,500 US dollars per year. And if you satisfied the requirements of the scholarship, which are typically academic requirements, then it's possible that you would get the scholarship for all four years. So all students are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships. No particular separate application is needed. Um, you will be considered as long as you apply and are admitted. So I will turn this over now to my colleague, Tanya, who will begin the process of how to apply. Thank you. So one of the things um, that we like to do uh, when we talk about the application process, um, it's, it's a common question that we get is to look at the step-by-step. Step. So what we're going to do right now is go ahead and share the step-by-step step, um, on the Binghamton University website. So this is our landing page. If you were to go to www.binghamton.edu, this is where you would uh, first come. And then when you come down here, undergraduate admissions and apply. And then you're going to select your status. Um, so we have three status to choose from. We have first year, transfer, and international. So it's important to note that an international student at Binghamton University is one who intends to study on an F-1 visa. Um, so if you're not intending to study on an F-1 visa, then you would go through either the first year or the transfer process here. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what the international student process is. Uh, so for purposes of this meeting, we're going to apply as an international first year. So apply as a first year student. I'd also like to bring to your attention to on this page, we do have uh, versions of our interactive brochures in English and Vietnamese and Chinese and Spanish and our transfer uh, brochure. Uh, so those are all wonderful resources that we're going to share with you today as well. So the first step in applying is to apply online. Um, we accept three types of applications, the common application, the uh, SUNY application and the coalition application. Uh, so they're essentially work in all in the same ways. Most international students will choose the common application. So when you click on this button, it actually takes you out 
to Common App's website, which is www.commonapp.org. Um, so the Common Application is not only accepted by Binghamton University, except, is accepted by many universities in the US and also um, several globally. Uh, so when you go to Common App, it's going to give you the option to choose Binghamton as one of the uh, campuses that you're applying to. Okay, so after you submit your common application or whichever application type that you choose, uh, you're going to get an email from Binghamton University saying, thank you for applying to Binghamton, we received your application, please go ahead and activate your account. Uh, so you're going to have a reference number, you'll have a user ID, and it's very important that students activate their account because this is how Binghamton University is going to communicate with you. Uh, we'll communicate with you via email, but we're also going to put uh, sensitive information, time sensitive information on uh, what's what we call your status checker. So this is a checklist that shows all the items that we've received and items that are still pending. The next step is to submit your transcripts. So Binghamton University requires transcripts showing all the courses you've taken and all the grades that you've earned from the ultimate three years of study. So for those students who are applying to fall to, uh, 21, that means we're looking for uh, your grades from academic year 2017-18, 2018-19, and 2019-20. Uh, uh, so for some students that might mean multiple schools. So we do want transcripts from every school that you had attended within those years, and we want them to be sent by the school for them to be considered official. Uh, and we can answer any questions that you might have about that. So this year Binghamton is test optional, SAT, ACT test optional specifically. Um, so there were uh, a lot of students who were unable to take the SAT or the ACT it got canceled in many cities around the US and in many, many cities around the world. Um, so if you don't have scores to uh, submit, that's totally fine. We can still uh, read your application and make a decision. Um, you'll still be eligible for for scholarship consideration, even without the SAT or ACT. Um, however, you do have to let us know on the form that either yes, you plan on sending SAT or ACT or no, you plan on not sending it. So your application will be incomplete until we get that form. Uh, and it is a Binghamton form. So after you submit your Common App and you go through those first few steps, uh, then this will be the next one down the line. Demonstration of English proficiency. Uh, so Binghamton University does require all international students to submit at least one uh, score up for English proficiency. We accept TOEFL, we accept IELTS, we accept Duolingo. Um, for those who have SAT or ACT, we accept those too for English proficiency and we give you our mid 50% ranges. Um, th these are not minimums, but they're saying that last year of the students who submitted test scores, uh, that middle 50%, their scores fell within these ranges. Uh, so just to give you an idea of you know, if your English scores are falling within or above those ranges, that's considered to be competitive. Some students might be asking, do I still have to submit an English proficiency score if the language of instruction at my school is English? Uh, yes, you do. So although we have students who apply to us um, from schools within the US or schools where English is the language of instruction, uh, we because English is can be very different from school to school as far as the support that's offered. Um, out of fairness to all students who are applying, we do ask for at least one English proficiency score. Okay, and so actually uh, with the financial documents, we don't need that for uh, admissions purposes. It's just these five steps that we need after you uh, receive an offer of admission, if you are admitted, uh, then we will ask for financial documents. So that's gonna be, that's more of like a sixth step, although it has the number one next to it. Um, so yes, I will copy this and I will share it with you all. Um, and we can go ahead and answer any questions that you might have. 
Tanya. Yeah, it looks like we have a couple more questions here. Um, I hope we our technical glitches have fixed and that we can see the screen now. Um, I did want to ask our, our our three students here who have been on and some have answered your questions behind the scenes, but we had a, a wonderful question from a student. If you could describe Binghamton University in, in one word, how would you describe Binghamton? So uh, maybe how you and Silver and I see Conleen, you've joined us. Uh, maybe you three could just give us maybe your one one statement about what what brought you to Binghamton and what's made you stay what's what's impressed you the most and uh, you know what what would you use to describe Binghamton to our students who are, who are watching today uh, to help them understand what made you choose Binghamton yeah sure so uh, before coming to Binghamton my teacher in China told me that Binghamton is a great place for study because it's in a small town it's pretty quiet and there's it's not like a hustle and bustle city so it's a great place to um uh to uh you know to to get around with the people in the town and um just in this small town and to focus on your study great thank you um how you what were your thoughts on that yeah as i mentioned in the chat box I think if I use one word to describe the Binghamton University, I will use the diversity since I met many friends from different culture backgrounds, from different kinds of clubs or student organizations. Also, I joined plenty of different student organizations and uh, from there I found my passion from Binghamton. So I think Binghamton offers a lot of opportunities for me to keep trying different things and met different people. Great, thank you. And Conley, would you like to uh, share your final thoughts with us? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, one word that I describe when I attend Binghamton is that um, EU students like and faculties here are very smart and friendly. So whenever I have any problems, I don't need any advice from other people. Um, it's, uh, it's very easy for me to reach out and ask them for their advice. So, um, and also there are a lot of clubs, organizations offer me to John to let us go more like how you said, uh, passions and then my major. So um, like when I attend Binghamton, it's like my second family. I have uh, more opportunity to interact with BU members or uh, with other dedicated and motivated people that uh, helps me to try hard, work hard, and yeah, be the best version of myself. Great, thank you. Um, so it looks like we do have another question here, and I know we're we're at our time limit, but we, we would love to answer your questions as long as the students have questions. We want to make sure that we can get to them. So um, this is another question I think for you guys as students uh, that would be a really good one to answer. Um, so how has COVID-19 affected the classes at Binghamton? Perhaps you guys can give an idea of, of your classes this semester, what they've been like. Have they been conducted virtually? Are we in person? I know at Binghamton we are kind of using a hybrid model this semester but uh, what are your experiences with the classes this semester? Um, for me, all my five classes are conducted online and I don't think it really, you know, have a great influence on my classes because all my classes are like, uh, for example, sign languages and then French literature and French grammar and translation workshops. So those are well uh, conducted online, but I do think maybe some courses like that those science classes that have labs, they have to like conduct it on campus, but I'm pretty sure like uh, almost all those like art courses, they can be done online pretty well. Right. And were you able to have interaction with your fellow classmates and your professors, even though the classes are online? And did you, did you feel you were able to engage and connect with your, yeah, with your fellow sure. classmates? The, yeah, we can still have like the professor still provide online Zoom meeting as their office hour. And I think it's more accessible uh, compared to like the in-person because you just need to sit in front of your camera and just go into it. You, you don't need to like virtually go into their office. So it's more convenient for me. Great. That's good to hear. Um, how you or Conley, do you have any any thoughts about this semester's classes? Yeah, same as me. I also have uh, all classes are virtual classes, but I don't think there's a uh, different matters since all my uh, teachers will have a, a 
one time Zoom meeting. Also, they will record the meeting and upload the meeting to our uh, videos on my courses. So we can also review the classes after I took it. So I think it's more convenient than the in-person classes. Mm. And Kanlin, what about you? So I have the same ideas with Silver and how you. So um, basically in this semester, I have a floor class and one of us, I have to work in a group with other students. Um, but like the professors, like they know about like um, student now in our like and we may in different countries, so different time zone. So he give a lot, us a lot of opportunities to try at first. So try to meet each other first and then assign what time that all fits each other. And then um, he also creates for us like a discussion board so that we can discuss with each other online. And yeah, and then he also opened the zoom uh, virtual things to for us to like ask question if we do have um any confusion in class or any questions relates to our projects great i know it sounds like and and this has been the story from uh, a lot of our students our our faculty really do want to meet our students where they're at and they really want to help our students succeed the best way they can whether it's in person or whether it's virtual right now because of COVID-19. Um, I know we will have a much a similar looking semester in the spring but um, our faculty work very hard to make sure that they are available for our students and able to answer those questions so that our students can be successful and you three are certainly uh, uh, some testimonies to that of being uh, successful students at Binghamton and, and making the most of this situation. So uh, we really thank you guys for coming on today. Um, I think that's about what all, all that we have time for. Um, we're going to wrap it up here. We want to let you know we are on social media, uh, lots of different social media channels you can find us on. You can always email us at international at binghamton.edu. Uh, we are on WhatsApp at that phone number there if you'd like to save that and send us questions there. We do have uh, dedicated hours where we answer your questions. You can find us on YouTube. We're also on Yoku. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, WeChat, so lots of different places where you can find us if you'd like to reach out and ask any questions to us. We'd be happy to answer them, uh, myself, Pat, or Tanya, and of course our wonderful students are always available to answer questions too. They love speaking with our prospective students. We want to make sure that you have all the information that you can so when you're applying to Binghamton you know that you're making the right choice and that you uh, have all the information you can to, to make a, what's a really big, a big decision uh, for our students. So thank you again for joining us all so much. Much. I'm going to um, stop sharing the screen so that we can maybe see everyone's lovely faces here uh, before we before we leave. So thank you for joining us for this hour today, and uh, we hope that you have enjoyed this session. And uh, we we look forward to reviewing those applications. And please feel free to uh, reaching out to us if you have any other. Um, questions or we'd like to email us or set up a time even just to meet with us individually. We would love to chat with you, love to share more about Binghamton. So thanks again, everybody, and we hope you have a, a great start to your week.